You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. Anxiety variety is the order of the day. So this week, I'm talking about the fact that we just want to be loved and the fact that we spend a bit too much time thinking about ourselves. And I have a personal story that I want to share with you, something which I would have never have thought I'd be talking about this on the Anxiety Podcast, but it happened last weekend and I sat with it for a bit and just thought it's so relevant to so many of us in our lives that I wanted to share it with you. I wanted to tell you about it. I wanted to shout it from the rooftops. Well, maybe not shout from the rooftops, but tell you about it. Um, it did make me burst into tears as well, like literally a blubbing mess. And so keep listening and I will tell you why I became a blubbing mess. Before I get onto that, I got a favor to ask of you. I'm busy working on the anxiety journal. Um, it's with the uh, kind of layout designer who's working on the pages at the moment, and it's getting really exciting. I will have the pre-sale page up soon. It's something I'm working on. Loads of good stuff going on. Um, but what I need from you is quotes. In uh, the anxiety journal, there's going to be for each day that you write in the journal, there'll be a day of activities for you to do, a few questions for you to answer. Not very laborious. Doesn't take very long to do. But at the top of each page, there's going to be an inspirational quote. Now, on the basis that this journal is kind of for six months of journaling, I need like 160 to 180 different quotes. So that's the ask of you. If you have an inspirational quote that you love, it doesn't have to be anxiety, although it can be anxiety. It can be about fear. It can be about life. It can be about expansion. Whatever you want. If you've got a quote that you love and you think it would resonate with people in our community, please go to anxietypodcast.com, click the contact page, and put it in that form and hit send and send it to me, and it will be in my book. How about that? If you send it and I like it, it will be in the book. You will be part of the book. This is really us coming together. It's such a beautiful thing. So if you have a nice quote, you need to tell me who to attribute it to, like who came up with it, so I can properly do it, and then we can put it into the book. And then when, you're get, when you get to that page of the journal, you can be like, I contributed to this. Yes. All right. So uh, have a look at that. While you're on the website, obviously the usual stuff. Um, if you would like to contribute to the Anxiety Podcast and to the future health and success of it, you can click on the Donate tab and you can donate from as little as $2 a month. You can do one-time donations, whatever you want. There's kind of some fun, cool things to look at. Um, when you look at the, the monthly subscriptions, I've given each one a little description. I'll read one to you just as an example. Piggybacker. This is what I say. So if you donate $10 a month, this is what I say. I'm going on a nature walk, except due to your generosity in helping me uh, not have to do so much editing today, I'll be skipping through the leaves. I will skim some rocks into the ocean and think of you with every one. I'm going to put together a package for you, including some of my favorite calming tea bags. Honestly, this is much appreciated. So there's some other funny ones on there if you want to go and have a look. Um, and obviously, if you want to take it a step further and actually donate, I would be massively grateful. Thank you very much. Um, as I've said before, I'm trying to get to the stage where I'm doing less of the editing and staying up till one in the morning, getting this ready and more of the content creation, which is what it's all about for me. I love talking about anxiety and figuring it out and helping you overcome it. That's what this is for. This, that's the purpose of the podcast. Um, other stuff on the website, obviously click on the coaching tab. If you want to be a one-on-one -on -one coaching client, we can jump on the phone and see if it's a fit for us. We also have Fear Bootcamp, which is a wonderful community of people who are actively looking to overcome anxiety and do all the work involved. All right, that was a long intro, but some important stuff in there, so I'm glad you're with me. Um, so yeah, last weekend I burst into tears, just a blubbering mess and... Uh, I must have been feeling a bit sensitive or something because it, it poured out of me. But let me tell you how I got there. Um, and before I get to the background, I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about what this episode of Anxiety Variety is about. I believe we just want to be loved. Like deep down, I've talked about this before from a, a tribal point of view. We're back in our caveman days and we walk into the tribe and everybody's looking at us and we're, we're wondering if they're going to eat us or if they're going to chase us and hunt us down. I mean, that's where our 
fight or flight instinct originates from self-preservation, right? So all we really want somebody to do is from that tribe is to walk over to us and say, oh, Tim, we wonder where you were. You were late getting back from the day's hunting and give me a big hug. And I'm like, oh, yes, they still love me. This is amazing. But that doesn't always happen. And, and so often, and as we know with anxiety, so often we're focused on ourselves. We're focused on like, oh, what does everybody think about me? And I wonder how I feel inside and what is, what's he looking at and why is she smiling at me or whatever. There's a lot of conversation going on internally. So I'm encouraging you to think about other people. And I've talked about this a bit before, you know, stop making it about you. Don't make it all about yourself. But we do care so much about what other people think that we're, we're often in our own heads, right? And my question for you this week is, how often do you reach out unconditionally? How often do you reach out without asking for something back? How often do you just do a good deed and say, I'm going to hug you, I'm going to love you, I'm going to kiss you, I'm going to give you my parking space, I'm going to buy you a cup of coffee, whatever. How often do we do that without expecting something? It's kind of like the dynamic of Christmas and gift giving. When you're a kid, you're like, well, I've given out five presents, but I only got three back. Why is there a discrepancy? Right. And then as you get older and a bit more savvy, you're just happy to, well, I am anyway, I'm happy to give stuff and not receive as much, but that might be just the minimalism or minimalist in me. I don't, I just don't want the stuff. Um, so who in your life do you need to give a hug to? Who in your life do you maybe constantly at odds with or constantly in a battle with verbally, physically, whatever? You're constantly back and forth. Um, And maybe it's time for you to consider that you don't have all the answers. Maybe it's time for you to consider that you actually have the ability to control the dynamic, to change the dynamic, not control it in a manipulative way. But if you're like with your significant other or your brother or your friend and you're always back and forth, you know, back and forth kind of um, bickering, have you ever considered just putting down the putting down the weapons and saying, listen, I just I just ultimately love you and I just want to be friends right? Not in a condescending way, in a genuine way. Like, I I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not prepared to do this anymore. I can't keep fueling this fight. And I've seen this and I practice this myself a lot. If you change the tone of your voice, if you lower your voice, if you're in a shouting match and you lower your voice, the other person has to listen more. Um, their voice is going to be lowered because they're going to naturally kind of slow down. And otherwise, it's very hard to argue with yourself. It's very hard to shout at somebody who's not shouting back at you, right? So that's kind of something to consider is is what can you do to reach out unconditionally? And now I'll tell you the story why I burst out into tears the other day. I was sat, hopefully my boys don't get upset about me telling this story, and they probably won't because they thought it was funny afterwards. But um, I was sat talking to my 10-year-old and we were talking about the fact that he controls a lot of uh, the dynamic in his own life. You know, if he's negative and puts out negative energy, then he'll receive negative energy. If he's positive and puts out positive energy, um, then he'll receive it back. And I was explaining this dynamic to him, kind of, calm, you know, a karmic universe type discussion. Um, and I was saying a great example is if you're at odds with your brother, then you're going to receive that back. But if you walk to up to him and hugged him and just loved him, then see what would happen. Do you think he would hit you? Do you think he would be angry at you? Do you think that's possible? His brother's eight years old and he's like, yeah, he would be angry. He would be defensive. And I said, let's try it. Let's do a little experiment. So we're sat outside on our, on our deck. And I said to my 10 year old, I said, he's your younger brother's downstairs. He's going to walk up those stairs in a minute. When he walks up the stairs, walk over to him. Don't say a word. Look him in the eye, put your hands around him and give him a a beautiful hug. Like it's the most important hug you're ever going to give him in your life. And let's just see what happens. And he's like, no, I'm not doing that. I don't want to hug him because he'll try and hit me or something will happen. And I was like, just do it for me. Like, please just humor me and walk over there and hug your brother and see what happens. Because I believed prior to, you know, finding out the result, I believe that the younger brother just wants to be noticed, just wants to be embraced. And 
he's only defensive because he's kind of put in that situation, like many of us are in our lives. Anyway, the eight-year-old walks up the stairs, the 10-year-old walks over to him, follows the direction that I'd given him, embraces him, and his younger brother lights up on his face, just lights up, a beautiful smile across his face, and, and looks his older brother in the eye, kisses him on the lips, and is just totally over the moon. Just, it was such a beautiful moment because they're often, you know, with that two-year age gap, they're often chasing each other around the house rather than embracing. And uh, I burst into tears. I just like literally, <laughs> it like poured out of me. Like I, I, don't, I didn't see it coming. I wasn't expecting it. And both of these kids who were hugging turn and look at me and they're like, dad, what's wrong with you? Why are you crying? And I was like, I don't know why I'm crying. I'm just it's so beautiful. I couldn't stop crying. I was just like a mess. And then they run into the house. And they're like, mom, dad's outside and he's crying because we hugged. He's crying. Um, so that was just, I don't know, it made my day. And then after that, they were just tight. Like they're walking down the road. Um, and normally they're kind of not next to each other. Now they're walking down the road. They're walking right close to each other. They're sat in the car and they're just peaceful. And we, we were able to do lots of things as a family because they just were a lot more harmonious. It was just easy, right? Those of you with kids, you know, when they're arguing and fighting and it's like, all right, we're not going to go out for ice cream. We're not going out for dinner. We're not doing anything because this is too hard. But when they're like harmonious, it's like, yeah, we can, we can go somewhere and explore if you want. This is fun. Um, so the reason I'm telling you that story is, you know, A, that you can laugh at me for bursting out into tears. Um, oh, by the way, I don't have a problem crying in front of my kids. I know some people do, but I think it's very important to show our vulnerabilities to, to the younger ones so they can see that it's okay to show emotion, right? It's okay to cry. Um, I just wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to turn into a big pile of jelly, but I did. So there you go. But the point when I sat with that experience and thought about it is there's a lot of people in our lives who just want a hug. There's a lot of people in our lives who just want you to walk up to them and embrace them and say, nothing maybe. Maybe you don't need to say anything. Maybe you need to say sorry. Maybe you just need to say I love you. Maybe you just need to hold them. Apparently, if you hug somebody for more than 20 seconds, it sets off a chemical reaction in our bodies and releases oxytocin, and that's the kind of love hormone. Um, so, yeah, maybe that's something you need to try. Anyway, I wanted to share that story with you um, and uh, because I, th I just think it's massively relevant in all of our lives, and often it's easy to get embroiled in these to-and-fro situations, whether it's on email or face-to-face -face or on the phone, and sometimes it's nice just to, just to stop it. Just even if you're right and they're wrong, just stop it. You have the control to change the dynamic. It doesn't make you a bigger person. It doesn't, you know, it's not all about that. It's just like you have a choice. Do you put more energy towards this thing or do you stop? And not stop as in a like, you know, screw you way. Just stop as in just put you down your tools and just relax, right? Anyway, there you have it. That is what I wanted to talk to you about this week. As I always do on the old Anxiety Varieta, I wanted to read a review uh, for you. This review on iTunes was from Chichi Lulu, I think the name is. Um, and it's titled Genuine and Actually, in capitals, Helpful. And it goes like this. Tim has a true passion for helping the anxiety community and it shines through this podcast. Very useful and in-depth information which unfortunately I don't see in most self-help slash anxiety advice resources. Usually are they, they are more vague and shallow. And I, for one, am so grateful that we have access to this for free. Thank you, Tim. If there were more podcast resources out there like yours, we'd have way more people with the tools to override anxiety and be at peace. Thank you for the review. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, and I've said before, you know, I'm, I'm focused around the anxiety stuff because... Although anxiety has the ability to kind of interplay with other things that are going on in people's lives, I want to just be laser focused to provide maximum value to you in this particular area. Um, so anyway, appreciate the reviews. If you haven't done a review yet, please go to iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play or wherever you consume this information and leave a review. It takes you 30 seconds and it lasts a lifetime. Um, it also helps people find the podcast, which uh, helps them, helps you, helps me, helps everybody. Um, so yeah, do a review if you haven't done one yet. Just as a reminder, 
The Anxiety Journal is coming out soon. I will have the pre-order page up there soon where you're going to get a, a special opportunity to get one of the first edition journals at an exclusive rate. But more importantly, if you have any quotes that you would like to be included in the journal, I would love to make you a part of this. So as I said, go to the contact page, send me a quote, and uh, if I like it, I'll throw it in there. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com. 